What you're about to see is an edited, shortened version of an exchange that I had with the Oregon Department of Veterans Affairs Director, Nikesha Daniels, during an a ODVA Veterans Advisory Committee meeting town hall. Sorry, that's a lot. Um, you're going to see, you're only going to see when I'm talking, ODVA is supposed to upload these videos to their YouTube channel. And I suspect they will cut my part out. And if you want to learn or see more, go to my YouTube channel. I'll link it here. Um, but yeah, this is how Oregon treats veterans. And I don't think it's right. Go to GIJustice.com and, and listen to cause. There we go. Can y'all hear me? Awesome. Yes. Uh, if you remember me, I was uh, at the town hall meeting, I think this year, earlier this year, and I made a comment about civil rights. Um, my name is Logan Isaac, and in the meantime, I started GIJustice.com. Um, and Ms. Hafe, if you can put that on the chat, that would be great, or I could. Um, and Dr. Daniels, I'll see you next week at the Senate hearing. Um, Tuesday the 10th, I'm going to be, I'm going to be presenting, I think, uh, closer to 4.30 because I have the last slot and I only have 10 minutes, but I'll be talking about two legislative concepts that are going to be presented during the long session, thanks to the efforts of Senator Kim Thatcher and Representative James Hebe. The first is a memorial that's being addressed to Congress, uh, asking them uh, to enforce hate crimes protections that have never been enforced for military families. The second is a, hopefully, going to be the nation's first comprehensive military civil rights act. And the un, I mean, we need that because veterans don't have civil rights. I'll say that again, just to be really clear. After serving, if you serve, you are, you become a specific legal entity and you can then be denied protections under federal law as a veteran because federal agencies either do not have laws to enforce to protect soldiers, veterans, and their dependents, or the laws that do exist, like the Hate Crimes Act of 2009, have never been enforced despite multiple violent crimes that have targeted service members and veterans. So if you wanna hear about that, I encourage you to check out gijustice.com or you can come to the Senate hearing on Tuesday, December 10th, around 4.30, and I'll give more information on that. My question is a little bit more direct, and it's to Director Daniels. Um, it feels to me, and this is pure speculation, uh, circumstantial or whatever, but it feels like ODVA is not giving 100%. The ODVA does not complete basic tasks necessary to convey that vets are worth our best effort. And I'll direct your attention to page 12 of the report where you, or the, the ODVA failed to run a spell check. I'll let you find uh, where someone in your organization failed to run a spell check or failed to hire a copy editor. And now we have in a, a top heading, a misspelled word. That should be really important. That should be easily caught. The other one that really bothers me because I've missed out on important resources like the stand down at Grand Ronde that I wanted to attend. I missed out on NAMI um, peer support specialist training because the weekly digest bulletins, which I've been receiving since I was a resident of Oregon in July of 23, consistently give information that is backdated and therefore expired. I've gotten multiple bulletins where they're calling my attention to say September 11th remembrance meetings. It's sent on September 16th. Not only is this reflective of a lack of concern for real veterans who receive that, it reflects a lack of care on your part and the part of ODVA to do the basic tasks necessary to convey that veterans are worth our best efforts. And the only logical, rational conclusion is that ODVA does not value veterans as real human beings 
rather than political pieces in sloganeering and the latest zeitgeist hot button issue. I want to be involved, but the ODVA is certainly not a, deliberately, but by chance and incompetence or negligence is prohibiting me from taking part in resources, events, and other things that I would love to participate in, and it's insulting. So my question is why are vets not worth 100% of our best efforts? I'll restate the question. Why does ODVA not treat in their actions, in their deeds, in their language, veterans as fully human? One question. Uh, I'm just looking for an answer to the question. I don't want glad handing. I don't want TYFYS. Why is ODA failing to make basic requirements of human dignity? No, you have had the opportunity and you have abdicated the responsibility. So I'll repeat my question. Why does ODVA not value veterans as human beings, as full human beings? So what we want to make sure that we have is we want to make sure that we have a respectful exchange, right? Everyone else here. So thank you. Do you want me to respond or do you want me to keep silence so that you can go on? No, 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 I don't, because I do want to move on to other things. Oh, it's very convenient. Focusing on no, typos, when I mentioned eight straight newsletters dating back to July of 2023, that is not one mistake. That is a consistent oversight. So I don't want any more of your thank yous. I did ask you specifically, those emails were sent by the spokesperson, Tyler Frankie. Is Tyler Frankie still an employee? If I had done the job that Tyler Frankie had done, I would have expected to lose my job. Doug said earlier today, I am not a vet, but this is why I serve. If I had done what is being done by the ODVA, I would have gotten counseled and demoted. So I'm sorry that you want to keep thanking me to distract from the fact. Thank you very much. We have respect for all No, I, I fronted that with, you have been disrespectful to veterans. So if you want us to treat you with respect, I'm asking why have you not already treated us with respect? It's very convenient to silence the people that you don't agree with when you're on payroll. You know, from the committee's standpoint, it's our job also to have time to listen to And I've been cut off because they're gonna go on. He's saying I'm upset. There's something like, I don't know how many Oregon veterans are dying. Here, I'm going to mute them. I don't know how many Oregon veterans are dying by suicide, but they want to silence me when I've asked why ODVA is being disrespectful for veterans. By getting in the way of being able to plug in with other veterans. Like I named specific instances of newsletters that have like gone out later than I would have liked. And they're going to continue glad handing and circle jerking. Look. That guy's still talking, as though I'm supposed to give a fuck, even though I got muted. So this is going on TikTok. This will be fun to put up because this is the double standard that Oregon veterans are supposed to put up with. Senator Manning lied to me about doing 15 minutes, trying to get me down to 10, and then pretending as though nothing happened. So this is going to go up on YouTube, and I'm going to tag the ODVA so that other normal human being veterans can begin to organize and make sure that we don't continue to be disrespected like this. Nobody should be treated like this, much less the peer, people whose sacrifices have already secured freedoms for everybody else. So go to gijustice.com, sign up for the newsletter, and join me on Tuesday, December 10th, 4.30, either online or in person at Salem at the state capital of Oregon. Thanks a lot for watching, and if you're a veteran, I'm sorry for all the fucking shit that you've had to put up with. Join me in the fight for human dignity and civil rights.